Hey guys, this is Nick with another video. Um, in a previous video, I talked about my favorite lenses for astrophotography, and it's time to update that because I have a new favorite lens that was not included in that video. Um, in the video, I had talked about the 24 millimeter 1.4 from Canon and the 25 millimeter f2.0 from Zeiss, along with my trusty 16 to 35. Um, a lot of people have given me a hard time because those are all really expensive lenses and they're totally right, they're totally justified and uh, I have a solution. This is the Rokinon 24mm f1.4 and it runs for around 500 I believe, you'll have to double check me on that, but I picked it up used for 350 or 375 and really it's better than either the Canon or the Zeiss. Um, the, the reason it's better is because it doesn't have any of those weird distortions that we had talked about. Um, really, it's, it's a fairly sharp lens. It's not quite as sharp as either the Canon or the Carl Zeiss. And it's a manual focus lens, meaning that you, know, you don't have autofocus. It's not going to be good for moving subjects or anything, but for landscape photography, it's awesome. Um, it lets in t just as much light as the Canon, only it doesn't have those weird distortions. It's manual focus and it's also a manual aperture lens. So it has the dial right on the side of the lens uh, for dialing in your f-stop. Um, we're gonna, let me show you a couple examples of how this uh, performs for night photography. You can see that it doesn't have any of the weird distortions around the edge of the frame. It's got quite a bit of vignetting, but you know, any lens wide open is gonna have some. But for the price, this lens is really awesome. Um, it's my new favorite lens for my night sky shots and it, you just can't beat it. I would say this or the 16 millimeter um, F2.8 from Rokinon, both awesome lenses for nightscapes and way more affordable than the Canon brand lenses. So anytime that I'm shooting a super wide shot, I use my 16 to 35 F2.8. Um, it's awesome for the big wide shot, but when I'm wanting to zoom in on the best part of the Milky Way, I jump to the 24 millimeter. Um, it's awesome for video. Like, I don't know if any of you guys are video shooters, but it's really cool to have that wide angle yet a really shallow depth of field, so it's great for that. Um, the only downsides to this lens is that it's manual focus. That, that it kind of sucks, <laughs> but, but it's not really for that. And also the, the focus ring is really kind of loose. Like it doesn't take hardly anything to bump it out of focus. So you gotta really pay attention um, and make sure that you're not bumping the, the focus ring. Also, I noticed that the infinity mark is not super accurate. You're gonna have to manually focus it and not trust the mark on the lens. And also, your can because it's a manual aperture lens, it doesn't really know what the aperture is on your camera, so you have to double check yourself and make sure that it's at the aperture you think it's in. Other than that, you cannot beat the price, you can't beat the performance. This really is the best lens for astrophotography. I know I've said that before, but it really is, it really is. You gotta try it out. Um, I don't know if you can rent this online, but it's worth checking out and it's definitely worth the purchase. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, head over to nickpagephotography.com to see more of my videos and tutorials. Go over to improvephotography.com and check out the podcast there and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.